After you've connected your Kronos to the Mac and installed all the drivers, it's a good idea to make sure that the computer is recognizing everything. So the best thing to do is open up the audio MIDI setup utility and take a look at both the screens there. On the audio screen, you should see the Kronos with two audio in and two audio out. On the MIDI page, you should see the Kronos device as a MIDI device. Now we know the Mac recognizes the Kronos, so we can jump into Logic and set up to record. Here I have an empty project, and first we'll record audio from the Kronos. So I select an audio track. If I'm set to mono, I can decide which input, left or right, I want. Or I can change the stereo, and then it assigns them both to that track. Now this is showing me the two channels from the Kronos, and that's because I have the Kronos set up as my audio input. If you're just setting this up for the first time, you need to tell Logic about your audio inputs, and you do that from the Preference Audio menu. Here you see I have set my input device as the Kronos. I've left my output to an aggregate device that I created that combines my Kronos with my Motu 828, and that's so my audio out is sent to my speakers. You need to select whatever output device you're using for your speakers. At this point, if I arm the track and we take a look at the track meters, you can see that we're getting audio from the Kronos. So I can hit record and play. And now we see the waveform of what I just played and recorded into Logic. So once your setup is right, this is really pretty straightforward. Now let's record MIDI from the Kronos. The quick and dirty way to do this is select External MIDI Track. This will set up a MIDI track ready to communicate with your MIDI devices. Now this command is assuming a general MIDI device, as you can see on the left here. And there are other ways to set this up that give you more control of the Kronos. But this will do for what we need now. We can see that it defaults to using all the MIDI ports, and we'll change that to Kronos. The default MIDI channel is one, which is all we need for recording a program. So I can hit record. Now you can see the MIDI data from what I just played. I can send this MIDI data back to the Kronos to control it. I'll change my program to an organ pad instead. And of course, any edits I make in Logic to the MIDI are sent to the Kronos. Once you get all the MIDI just the way you want, you probably want to get it all into audio so you can master it and output a sound file. Well, remember, our first track is connected to the Kronos audio output. So if I arm that track to record and hit the record button, what I have set up here is that track two will send my MIDI performance to the Kronos, the Kronos will play it, and output that audio, which will be recorded under track one. So that's the basic MIDI and audio recording. Now quickly I'll show you how you might set things up if you want to record a combi or from the sequencer. We start by setting up our external instrument again to the Kronos on channel one, same thing. And this time I'm in the sequencer on the Kronos and I can play my keyboard and record just like we did before. I can use Logic to quantize and clean up everything I just did. And then we can move to the next track. From the track menu, I select New with Next MIDI Channel. Now this is going to create a duplicate of the current MIDI track that I'm on, but it will assign the next MIDI channel to it. In our case, that's Channel 2. Now I have a bass sound assigned to that, so when I record, I get bass on track 2. <laughs> Now I'll repeat this for a third track that has a piano. Quick 
quantize it, and we're done. Like before, I can change what sound I've assigned on the chronos. What I'm going to do now is just change the piano sound to an organ, and this is the final result I get. And if I'm happy with that, I could bounce it to audio and be all done. So I hope that helps. <laughs>